survey, I asked the class to describe their opinions on the people. Many of you answered by saying that they're loving, misunderstood, or a great dog. And you're correct. Unfortunately, they're blamed for accidents such as this one, when this was done by a Doberman Pinscher. This accident could have happened to anyone and with any breed of dog, because one breed alone cannot be deemed as aggressive. I've had a lot of experience with how pit bulls are really like. I have worked at a dog kennel, I've worked for pit bull breeders, and I own one myself. I found that in my survey, many of you fall under the misconceptions that give this breed a bad reputation. And today, I would like to identify, excuse me, I would like to address the magnitude of this problem, identify the causes, and help you understand how we can take action to protect the pit bull. According to my survey, 86% of you understand that the pit bull has a bad reputation, but the problem is we still fall under the misconceptions. According to the website article, The Truth About Pit Bulls, created by the nonprofit organization Mid American Blue Free Rescue, accessed October 29, 2013, there are over 5 million registered pit bulls in the United States. But they are all, this population is labeled as problematic, aggressive, and falsely dangerous. There were two main true or false questions in my survey that I asked the class. Number one, pit bulls have the ability to lock their jaws. This is false. And number two, anyone can own a pit bull. This is again false. And these are just two common misconceptions that not only the class, but the entire United States falls under. And according to, do uh, excuse me, another controversy, according to dogsbite.org, created in 2007 by Lynn Media Group, there are 600 cities in the United States that label pit, pit bulls as aggressive because they think they are born that way. This has been proven false and helped explained by Rebecca O'Connor, who is the author of the National Geographic website article, The Truth About Pit Bulls, created in March 19, 2013. According to O'Connor, pit bulls have an 86.6% passing chance of a temperament test. And this is very good and actually beat the Border Collie, the Beagle, and the Golden Retriever. O'Connor also explains that pit bulls cannot lock their jaws. In fact, they can exert approximately 235 pounds of pressure, while an average dog like the Labrador Retriever can exert 320 pounds of pressure. It's misconceptions like these that lead to the lasting negative impacts. Again, according to O'Connor, 86.7% 86 of pit bulls one of the most devastating impacts that happen to pit bulls are the horrors of what happens to them in shelters. Again, according to O'Connor, 86.7% of pit bulls that are admitted to shelters are euthanized or put to sleep. The reason for this is explained by the website article, The Realities of Pit Bull Adoption, created by the nonprofit organization Love Able. The reason for this is because many shelters have a non adoption policy because pit bulls attract undesirable individuals looking to adopt and they have such a terrible reputation. These are not the only effects. In my survey, I found that one person understood or as to at least heard of breed-specific legislations, or BSL. These are laws designed against certain breeds and each year are growing more and more against the pit bull. According to dogsbite.org, created in 2007 by Lynn Media Group, there are 42 cities in the United States, there are 42 states, including the District of Columbia, and Indian reservations that have laws stating that pit bulls are aggressive or dangerous. They are banned in certain counties or are placed under restrictions. For example, in Dawson, Georgia, pit bulls must be kept in cages with wire or cement floors and must be muzzled when taken out. These laws are unnecessary and extreme. And the misconceptions are what cause these laws that these laws, these mistaken identities, and hardships, which in turn fuel a bad reputation for these pit bulls. Their reputation should be loving, loyal, and caring, but there are three major causes that prevent this. Number one, people and environment. According to the American Humane Society's website article, Animal Cruelty uh, Facts and Statistics, created, or excuse me, accessed November 11, 2013, Pit bulls are the most abused breed in the United States. Imbu abuse can include um, physical abuse, illegal fighting, or mishandling. And according to TruePitBull.com's website article, Fighting and Abuse Created in 2007 and Accessed October, excuse me, November 11, 2013, fighting, illegal dog fighting and dog abuse promotes aggression towards people and towards other dogs. Number two, media bias. 
According to Amelia Glenn, who is the author of Pitbull Discrimination, How Much Is Media to Blame, created January 18th, 2011, she conducted a research study on 34 dog attacks between 2005 and 2012. 22 were done by pit bulls, while 12 were done by other breeds. Out of the pit bull attacks, the headlines in the news labeled them specifically pit bull attacks, while the other 12, the news headlines labeled them the generic dog attack. This is media bias that discriminate against the pit bull and lead to their bad reputation. <coughs> and lastly, spaying and neutering. This is the removal of reproductive organs. And according to the American Vet Association of Medicine, Unneutered male dogs cause or are involved in 70 to 76 percent of attacks, and unspayed and unneutered dogs are four times more likely to attack. And pit bulls are one of the breeds that are not seen as the type to spay or neuter. But now I would like to help you understand how we can make a solution out of this because every cause has their solutions. Number one, you can report any abuse. Abuse can be collar being unusually tight, fright when owners are around, overreaction to certain objects like a broom, malnutrition, or chain aggression. The first number you see is the Lee County Domestic Animal, Ser Animal, Dom Domestic Animal Services, that, and they, this group is against euthanizing dogs, especially pit bulls, and promote rehabilitation. Or you can simply call 911. Number two, spaying and neutering. According to the Association for Animal Behavior, Effects of Spaying and Neutering, created in 2013, male dogs who were neutered showed 60% reduction of aggression, while female dogs who were spayed showed less maternal aggression. For spaying and neutering, you can contact PAWS, which is in Lee County, and they will spay or neuter for a low or reduced cost, or you can visit your local vet clinic. Lastly, prevent and refuse media bias. You can, if you see this, if you see the discrimination of pit bulls, you can email, call, or write a letter to your news station to let them know that they're doing something wrong. And in conclusion, I would like to review the components of my speech to help in hopes of inspiring you to protect the future of our pit bulls. The magnitude of this problem is growing each day and are caused by the misconceptions that lead to the negative impacts. The causes are so simple, but they, are, they fuel the bad reputation. Now solutions are out there and everyone can take action to help end what could be the end for the loving and adorable people.